All right, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at a simple bolted connection design. So let's go ahead and look at our problem statement. So determine if the connection shown below is sufficient to resist the indicated loading using the LRFD method. So we've got some assumptions. We're using 3 quarter inch diameter A325 bolts. We're assuming that both plates are A36 steel, 1 half inch thick. Is it a, is a bearing type connection? And deformations at bolt holes are a design consideration and we're assuming that the threads are excluded from the shear planes. So we've got a uh, small plate here bolted to a bigger plate. We've got some dimensions and we've got some loading. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook. Go into our steel module, go into our connection designs, go ahead and click on simple bolted connection, and open up the design module. So we've got some options here on the left side. Um, we are going to be using a two-plate connection. There is an option for a three-plate, like a sandwich connection. Uh, we do have an option for slip critical, but we're going to stick with bearing type. And we have already selected here uh, deformations that bolt holes are a design consideration. So we'll go ahead and move down to our bolt inputs. We are using a three-quarter inch bolt. We're going to assume it's a standard hole. We have three bolts and one row. And then we're using A325, so we'll open up our table here, uh, table J3.2. We're using A325 bolts, and the threads are excluded from the shear plane, so we have a nominal shear strength of 68 KSI. So we'll go ahead and enter that in. Uh, we're going to have a UBS um, of 1, and there's some more info in here as well for uniform stress or non-uniform stress. Then we go to our connection geometry. Uh, we'll go take a look here. We've got bolt spacing of three inches. We've got edge distances of one and a half, um, and then a nine inch tall plate here. So if we go back, we've got three inches there. For the y direction, we have zero since we only have one row. Um, for center of bolt in member one in the y direction, that is going to be 1.5. For Member two, that's a nine inch tall plate, so it's gonna be four and a half edge distance. And then we have one and a half and one and a half in the longitudinal direction. Uh, and then we go enter in the information for our plates. So 0 0.5 inches, and then we're using A36 steel. And if you need a reminder, you can jump into the table here and um, look at what you want. So we're using A36, so we're using 36 and 58, 36 and 58. And right now it's in uh, ASD, so we'll go ahead and switch that over to LRFD. All right, and then we need to enter in our demands. So we have a loading here of uh, 15 kip dead and 35 kip earthquake. So we'll go ahead and enter that in. All right, so we look down here in our quick snapshot. We're already seeing that we're failing by about 11% and we are failing by uh, tensile rupture strength of member one. So let's go ahead and take a look. We can dive into the details down here. So we'll go ahead and look at this first. Uh, let's see here, tensile rupture strength, member one. All right, it's gonna show us a diagram of uh, the, the member one plate here, where that failure is, and then the calculations for that. Um, it also will look at member two. Um, and then we'll do other things as well, right? It checks all the different failure modes for this connection. So it checks the bolt shear, the bearing capacity at the bolt holes, tear out, tensile yielding, tensile rupture, and then it'll also give you the block shear um, and all the different uh, possible failure modes of the block shear. And that is the simple bolted connection done.